my own position? Yeah, well, first off, you have to remember that when you're in a parenting situation, especially a parenting situation where you're not together anymore, you're going to come into conflict. If you didn't have conflict, you probably would still be together. So it's not so much I don't want to be in conflict as I want to emanate the truth of myself no matter what situation I find myself in. And as we've talked about before, most of you folks that have families, you're using your families as the playground for your spiritual growth. And it sounds like you're definitely doing that too. So emanating the truth of you is great no matter what, but emanating the truth of you for your kids to observe and experience with you is really, really amazing. It's the opportunity for them to realize that the completeness of them can be loved. The completeness of them is, is acceptable. The completeness of them is possible. And what happens a lot of times is kids are really taught that the only parts of them that are lovable are the parts that get good grades, the part that win football games and baseball games and soccer games, the parts of them that can play musical instruments, the parts of them that you know act in plays or whatever kids do. Those parts of them are the parts of them that get really appreciated. And what ends up happening is kids get kind of trained to say, well, only those parts that people have reflected to me that are good are parts that are safe to express. Which, of course, is not the truth of you. The truth of you is the completeness of you, and even the bits that are difficult for you to love, you still find a place within yourself to have room for. You may have a hard time loving them, but still have room for them. So when you teach your kids that all of them is interesting and fascinating to, to you, and all of them is interesting and fascinating for them to know, that's really the best way you can support them in becoming well-rounded people. And you can support yourself in becoming a well-rounded person. And when you're in interaction with their father and you're still being the completeness of you and telling your truth and not hiding what you know is true about you, well, that's going to model to them that they are allowed to have that completeness available as well. And that's really the gift that you're, you're, being, um, you're being able to offer is, as a parent is to not only emanate the truth of you, not only show the truth of you, not only live the truth of you, but also as in, in or interaction with your children, teach them to do it and then be models for each other in doing so. And of course you do this with everybody in your lives as you start to live the truth of you. But when you have kids and, and you're giving them the opportunity to know who they are completely, you know, most of the folks we talk to are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, and they're still, or just now, trying to understand how to be the completeness of them, what that even means, what it looks like, what the, quote, consequences are of living as the truth of you, how to love all the bits and pieces of you, even the bits and pieces of you you don't want anybody to know about. The gift you give your children by letting them know all of them is lovable. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. Of course you have boundaries. Of course you have preferences. And there are consequences for the violation of those boundaries. That's parenting, you know. But the gift you give by letting them know that all of them is who you want to know. And all of you is who you want to be. It's an unassailable position. When you're comfortable with the completeness of you, it doesn't matter what anyone else has to say about it, right? That's an unassailable position. Right. But it's when you are not comfortable with aspects of yourself that gives people hooks and places that they can, they can kind of get you. And by get you, we mean um, pull your chain, yank your chain, yank your chain, and, and trigger you and, and confuse you. And even if you feel triggered or have your yank, yank, ch chain yanked, that's a very funny one, isn't it? Because you don't have any chains. Um, you pull, pull Yankee. We like saying yank. It's fun. You don't have all that many words to start with Y and ank at the end. That's, that's kind of Yankee and yank. See, we're going to get distracted. Veronica's like, stay on target. We're on the first question. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, even if you do get your chain yanked or your buttons pushed or your triggers triggered or any of that, 
living the completeness of you, when you're on that path, what do you do? You say, wow, my yank is yanked, or my trigger's triggered, or I'm tempted to not want to be the completeness of myself here. And that brings you back into it. Because what you're doing is acknowledging it rather than resisting it, rather than fighting it, rather than saying no, 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 no. So the position of strength is telling the truth about what you're experiencing, even if what you're experiencing is hard for you to love. Even if you don't love it, you can tell yourself the truth about it, and that keeps you in consciousness. It's when something happens that you resist that things, this is a, we don't know what the word for that is. They get wonky, you get low vibrational, you get out of your center, you get, your feet aren't over your shoulders. You're out of balance. And as we go into 2011, which the visionaries have already declared with cursing that we already are in 2011, so welcome to it, here we are in 2011. While in 2011, the year is completely about balance. And even Renee taught you guys at the beginning of last week that even astrologically it's about balance. So it's about balance, and one of the ways that you're going to talk about balance is this thing that we've just brought up today, which is the idea that even the parts of me that I'm uncomfortable with have a hard time loving. Those parts of me I will acknowledge to stay in balance because as soon as you start to resist, you're out of balance. And acknowledge doesn't mean accept. Acknowledge means acknowledge. Wow, I really don't like that I still want to X, Y, Z. Boom, you're still in balance. When you say, oh, X, Y, Z, you're not in balance anymore. Okay, so balance is enough. Because it's going to be the big 2011 word, um, it's going to be the opportunity for us all to, to reclaim the word balance from what crazy definition it might already have, to clearly define it, and then to give lots and lots of examples and probably lots and lots of tools about how to stay in balance. So here's our first one. Part of being in balance is when you acknowledge a temptation to a low vibrational state, to a habit, et cetera, et cetera, rather than resist. You stay in balance when you acknowledge it. Even if you can't like it or love it, you can acknowledge it. That's like the bottom. Then you can move into, okay, maybe accept that it's part of you and then maybe you get into love eventually. But so long as you're in acknowledgement, you will stay in balance with it. Okay? That went a lot of different directions, but we hope that's supportive to you. And thank you for joining us all the way from Germany. Okay.